started Make Life Fun podcast because I needed more fun in my life. When I became a mother, I, for some reason, just put on this like high ponytail, mom jeans, and nose to the ground. I wasn't having fun. It wasn't until I started having fun that it started becoming easy. Fun and mental health go hand in hand for me. I've been in this mental health game my whole life. <laughs> and I am so lit up to like help other people. I'm so lit up for other people to experience this because it's what my wish and my mission is for every woman is to find safety within themselves because it took me a long time to get here. I just did this 21 day winter symposium where we were tending fire. So every day lit candle and set an intention. And I loved it. It was so beautiful. And in that winter symposium, I did this meditation where it was like connecting to your true essence. And it was with using water. So I'm going to share with you guys because it was so impactful for me. We were putting ourselves in imagination of being a glacier. So you're this glacier of ice. You're cold. You're so cold that you're blue. You're a blue glacier and your body is cold. Your stillness, you are frozen. And then the sun comes out. The sun comes out and now there's little heat to you. That driplets of water, they start to fall from that glacier. And then that driplet of water turns into a stream. And that stream is getting bigger now and it's turned into a river. And now that river is flowing into a lake and it's flowing into a bigger lake. And that lake is going into an ocean and bigger ocean, more oceans. And now you are being evaporated into the sky and now you're coming back down. Are you coming back down as snow or rain? And when I was doing that at the end of this meditation, she was like that water, the essence of water, no matter what form that water takes, that water is always that water. It's always is what it is. And so I was like, wow. Because no matter what new beginning, no matter where I go, no matter what I say, what I do, who Josie is at her core is just my me. I've never left. That essence of who I am never left. And I just found that so comforting. I found that so life-giving to even just think of that possibility of that my essence, my trueness, no matter what struggle I've been through has always been this. Our core is our hearts. Our core is that love that we feel for everyone, for ourselves. And when we start to shed and let go of the titles of wife, we start to let go of the titles of mother. We start to let go to the titles of author, the work that we're doing in the world. We just start to let go of all that external and completely surrender to just being still again, coming back inside of ourselves. Like for me, when I do that, I take that moment of pause and stillness. It just feels, it just feels electrifying. Like it's a, it's just a feeling of like here. And when there's that feeling of like, we're just here right now, then all those external layers just kind of fall to the wayside. But again, that takes practice of letting go of surrendering. And that's work that I've been doing at least for three or four years now of learning that surrender, learning to let go. And that is where the embodiment practices that I do that are practices for me. Like whenever I'm feeling like I am not in this place of surrender, when I'm not in this place of letting go, I come back to these practices and these tools and they bring me back into that alignment of knowing my true self and my true essence. And that is like my dream for the women that I serve is that they will, through the work of embodying what they care about most, get to know that true essence, get to know that feeling. Again, it's about feeling, get to know what that feels like for them. So that when you are in that going, in that doing, and it doesn't feel good, you can come back to, this doesn't feel good. And then from that place, then you can start to create from like, okay, that doesn't feel good. So how do I get back to that place that feels good? Why doesn't this feel good? So then you become the investigator because you know what it feels like to be in your own body. Grounding, meditating, nature walks, anything you do that allows you to feel out of your head and into your body. 
So for some people that could be working out, it could be dancing, anything that you are in complete connection with your body. So I can find this for me in meditation. I can feel this for me going for a walk, being out in nature, looking at a sunset, looking at a sunrise. I mean, all that beautiful creation, because that is what we are. So when we take that moment of pause or movement for some people, that's where we start to, that's where we can look. I was put to hip hop dance classes as a youngin and also in gymnastics. And so from an early age, that was my way of, of expressing myself is through gymnastics, through this hip hop dance class and just moving because when you're moving, it's almost like I'm calling it a prayer because it's play to me is like a prayer because you are just in that oneness, in that true essence of who you are, when you are not in your head. We have to get out of our heads. We have to let our minds like, like pause because it's always constantly going and going and that's its job. And so it's our jobs to find things that light us up like dancing, to find things that light us up like movement because it's like a prayer. And I say it's like a prayer because we are just being, you're not thinking what's the next move am I gonna make? Or is this right? Or is this wrong? Like you don't pause, like you're just moving and you're just in free flow and you're just radiating love and light. And yeah, dancing is amazing for healing. Dancing is amazing for fun. The quickest grounding practice that I like to do is just the body scan. So going from the top of your head and feeling that relax to your shoulders, relax, your arms, relax, your ah, torso, relax your legs, all the way to the bottom of your feet, feeling your feet on the ground. If you're sitting down, feeling your bum on your chair, feeling your back on the chair, just starting to bring sensation and aliveness back into your body. That is where we start to find our true essence. That's where we try start to find what it's like to feel in our bodies is when we start to feel the heat on the outside of our body, or if it's cold, or if there is a part of you that is tense or tight that is when you start to notice that and you're not judging it you're just allowing and then you're sending compassionate breath to the places that are tight you're sending compassionate breath to the places that you don't feel and you just bring yourself back into your body I call it coming home but a lot of people ask what does that even mean but for me that's what it means it's doing that body scan feeling the sensation and arriving inside what I've learned with anxiety and working with people with anxiety is that developing that practice where you come back, come back, come back, come back. You come back to that grounding and notice the anxiety. When you have the thought of I am anxious and coming back to that body scan, coming back to noticing the room, noticing what's around you, noticing who's around you. Because when you're in that anxiety mode, all you see is just this closed box. The anxiety is you're either in the future thinking about what's going to happen, or you're in the past and thinking what has happened and how it didn't work. So when you come back and you keep coming back, there, you can't be anxious in the now because what's happening in the now, you either have to accept it or change it. So when you give yourself that permission to accept right now, this is what is then that anxiety starts to slowly go away. There are mental health that embodiment people aren't ready for. They're not ready to drop into their bodies. I wasn't ready to drop into my body for the longest time. I didn't want to live here. I didn't feel safe here. I didn't feel safe in my body. I didn't trust myself because I've, there was times that I let myself down and times that I didn't keep the promises to myself. And so I didn't trust that what I was fine would be me having my own back. Like I just thought it was just all darkness here. And when I started to know, like, no, there's goodness here. And again, going back to that little Josie of like, she did the best she could in each chapter. And it's no wonder that her life has unfolded the way it has, because each chapter she had to adapt, each chapter she had to figure out how to navigate it. So there are some things that are harder that, in, that you have to do deeper work and you have to go to trauma specialists. Like you have to do the work to get to a place where you're, you're ready to start to see if you could start to even spark a little light into that dark place. I think the biggest shift for me was the inner child work. I never even had heard of it before. In 2020, when I took the course made to do this, we were doing visualizations about our inner child. 
And that led me then to find a hypnotherapist that helped me look at my inner child. And then I did some shamanic journeys that helped me look at my inner child. And I just kept coming back to the sweet angel that I didn't give her the do. I didn't give her the praise. I didn't give her the love. I was like shaming her. There was so much guilt there. And so when I started to like love her, I loved her to life. And the more I loved her to life, I came alive. Like my soul keeps wanting to come out. Like that's what I'm calling it right now. Like my soul keeps crying out for like more expansion. My soul keeps crying out for more joy, more love, more passion, more excitement, more ease. Like my soul is like, yes, yes, yes. But my human self is like, no, 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 no. Hide, hide, hide. Because I've been practicing for so long. I've been practicing hiding. I've been practicing putting on a new face for people. I've been practicing this behavior for so long that my human self, each time I expand, it's like before I can even catch it, it does it. And so like, I'll be in this place of like, woe is me. And I won't catch it right away, of course, because it takes a moment because the subconscious is quick. Like it's the blink of an eye, literally that quick the subconscious mind takes over because it's a learned behavior that we've been practicing for so many years. So now that I'm in this work and I've been doing this work, it's a feeling. So when I feel myself that way, I instantly find ways to shift my mood. I move, I get up, I go outside, I open a window, I put on some music, I call my husband, I look at my son. Like I start to look for things that bring me joy. I start to look for things that I'm grateful for. And it doesn't happen right away, but it's those practices that I've started to brainwash. I've started to brainwash myself with this goodness, knowing that it is safe for me to be happy. It is safe for me to have all the joy. It is not selfish for me to want to be happy. It is not selfish for me to want to feel good. And so giving myself that permission to look for good and keep looking for good and keep looking for good. So each time my subconscious mind goes back to that, I want to hide. I want to play small. Nobody likes me. I'm wrong. I am completely wrong right now. Like I'm doing something wrong. I'm not enough right now. Like why did nobody buy my program? Like I put it out there. Why didn't it resonate? I put my heart and soul into it. Like why didn't it resonate? And then I started asking myself, did I put my heart and soul in? Did I open my arms to receive? Or was I blocking it because I was saying I'm wrong? Like, what was I doing in that moment of asking people to join me? And so now I'm like, I want to come from that place of expansion. I want to come with my arms open, like I'm here to serve. And so it's different now. And I would have never shared the fact that my, like I did this five-day challenge. I put out this offer and crickets. And normally, and that did, it brought me down for about a week where I was defeated and frustrated and deflated and felt like all this work was for naught. Working with my coach, I think I even said, well, I guess this wasn't supposed to be like, this isn't meant to be like, I'm not meant to serve in this way. Like, so I started doing that self negative self talk again, start, went back and started doing the work. I was like, okay, so I'm feeling like crap. How do I feel better? So I joined that 21 day symposium and I started setting intentions with my candle and I started journaling and I started reading my guidance book and I started finding ways to feel good again. And I started dancing and having fun. And now it's like, there's so much joy radiating from me again. And this is where I create from the joy, not from the lack, not from the, woe is me. Nobody signed up. Nobody wanted my program. It's something about me. No, it just wasn't, it was, it wouldn't, if people would have bought it, it wouldn't have worked out anyway. It wasn't meant to be yet. It wasn't ready yet. Now it's ready because I went through that. I failed and I got myself back up. The question of I'll be happy when. So when I first met my husband, I went around saying, I get what I want. Like that was my mantra. Like that was the sassy Josie snapping, head rolling. Like I get what I want, period. And I don't know where I got that from but that was me. I meet my husband and he starts to tell me, you don't get what you want in this world. You get what you work hard for. He starts telling me, you don't get what you want. And so he started not giving me what I wanted all the time. And like, you don't get what you want. It doesn't work like that. The world doesn't revolve around you, Josie. Like (laughs) that's what he started to say to me. So then I stopped saying that. I'm like, okay, I guess that's selfish of me to get what I want. So if my husband or my boyfriend at the time is telling me it's selfish to say I get what I want, 
then it must be selfish. So then I stop completely saying that I get what I want. And then fast forward to this, I'll be happy when. So I've always known, I think it's just in my imprint, like my parents, my everybody behind me, there's a knowing inside of me that knows that I create my reality. Like there's just this knowing. So even if people are trying to block, like block that from my knowing, I know that for some reason. So when my husband, anytime he would say, I'll be happy when, like, I'll be happy when I get this job. I'll be happy when we get more money. You can hire this person when you make more money. You can expand your business when you make more money. You need to stop paying for courses, Josie. You haven't made enough money. Like in that scarcity mindset, I mean, it did rub off on me for probably the last two years. (sighs) I've been blocking myself because I've been hearing that and I've been sympathizing with that and like taking it in, chewing on it. But there's that knowing inside of me that I get what I want. Like I get what I desire. I create my reality. And so I started to tell my husband, like, no, you will not be happy when you have to decide to be happy now, because if you are waiting to be happy, that's when you're like, he is sober now. He's been sober for 10 months. So huge accomplishment. But he went from living from that place of I'll be happy when and living in anxiety every day, living in stress every day, coping with drink, with using the alcohol to cope with the hardship to like, I'm going to be happy now and see what unfolds. And just with him, if you would have asked me if this was possible when I was pregnant with my child and I like left my husband in Montana and moved in with my parents because I couldn't handle the drinking, that Josie, if you would have told her your husband's going to quit drinking He's going to start meditating. He's going to start loving himself. I would have been like, no, there's no way. But that's how I know this works because it's worked in my life. Like I have seen my life shift. I've seen my husband's life shift from doing that work of I'm going to be happy now. I'm going to look within for validation. Now I'm going to heal those parts of me now. And so this healing journey that we're on together, it's like both of us are expanding. Both of us are visualizing. So I'll be happy when it doesn't exist. It's like, look for the good. Look for evidence of happiness now. Like, look for the good. Like, what is good in this moment right now? The sun came out. Your eyes open today. You were able to walk. You're able to talk. You have food in your fridge. Like water, clean water to drink. Like for me, it's a warm shower. So when I was traveling through Southeast Asia, I didn't always have a warm shower. Sometimes the water was so ice cold. All I could do was like, barely like get in and like splash and then get out. And so now when I'm under that warm shower and I just get to turn a knob and be under warm water, I'm like, oh my God, I'm so thankful for warm water. So it's like, what is it for you that you could come back to instead of I'll be happy when, what right now could you be thankful for? Like gratitude is the ticket. Yeah, one client that comes to mind is why would I show up on social media? Why would I put my life out there? Like, who cares? Like, what will they think of me? What will they say? Like, and I went back to like, but who can you serve? What is what, what if one person from one post you did, what if for that, that you were their light that day because you posted one post, you showed up one time. Like, what if you decided to go there? What if you were able to show up from that place of I'm going to serve? And my story matters. What if that was the thought? What would the feeling be if that's the thought? That feeling is serving people. And we as human, we want to serve. We want to help, especially as women. We want to help. Like that's like in us to help people. And so shifting that to it's all about me. I got to play small. I can't show up. Like what will people say? What will people think? To what if I help that one person? What if I'm that spark for that one person? Because I showed up that day. And letting that be the reframe. So each time that thought comes up, like, who am I to do this? But who am I not to do this? Who am I not helping if I don't do this? Like coming from that place of service, that place of wanting to serve was a big mind shift. shift. Because then (laughs) she was like, I have a group. Will you come and do this centering practice with them? Will you like, she had a group on Facebook. She's helping women. The rest is history. Given ourselves permission, we look for it outside of ourselves often. We want people to validate our beauty. We want people to validate our worth. We want people to say our work is great. We want, we look. And because as children, we were always getting validated. We're always getting told, or good job when we did something right, bad job when we did something wrong. Because of that, we've been conditioned to look for that validation outside of ourselves because we didn't have control. So now that we're adults and we want to take back that control, We have to say, I give myself permission 
to play. I give myself permission to see the truth of my life. I give myself permission to accept abundance. I give myself permission to shine my light. I give myself permission to be me completely. Just be me. I give myself permission to walk this journey of healing. I give myself permission to cry. I give myself permission to show emotion. I give myself permission to not be strong all the time. It starts with those simple thoughts of like pick one thing and just keep saying, I give myself permission. I give myself permission. I give myself permission. And pen to paper is magic. There's something about pen to paper that is just pure magic. So giving yourself permission, like writing it out, like whatever flows, just let it flow. Don't try to edit it as you're creating it because a lot of us want to like, right. I give myself permission and then cross it out. Right. Nope. Just let it flow. Let it be whatever comes out of your body. Let it be. And then read that back to yourself over and over again, over and over again, brainwashing yourself into believing a new belief because your circumstances are never going to change. The outside world is going to keep going. It's going to keep doing what it's doing. There's still going to be people on social media that are bullies. There's still going to be COVID. There's still going to be people hurting in the world. There's still going to be suffering. Like, and there's still all this out in the world. So the circumstances can't be what defines how we live our lives. We have to like choose a new thought. We have to operate from feeling. We have to feel different. And the way we feel different is by thinking something new. And by thinking something new, like giving ourselves that permission of like, I give myself permission. That's a new thought. And then that new thought gives you a new feeling. And then that new feeling gives you a new action. And then that new action gives you a new result in life. (laughs) So it just starts with that one, like just give yourself that one permission that you need today. For everybody, it's going to be different. But those are the permissions I've been giving myself. I am open to helping and serving. And I am holding that space now. And my coach, I got coached by Kathy Heller, not yesterday, but the day before. And she asked me this question that was just like shift. She's all, how much is Beyonce holding to allow all that abundance in? Like how much space is she taking up? And I was just like, oh oh my gosh. (laughs) I was just like, I sat back and I was just like, I will show you how to take up space. So that's an embodiment practice for taking up space. And it's a practice that you have to do. If you don't do the work, nothing gets done. And so for me taking up space, like it's almost like you have to make yourself bigger. So we want to be like this. We just want to get small, especially when things don't go our way and we get unwanted results. We want to like, just like hide under the table. And so we have to like give ourselves permission again to like take up space. So we have to start opening our bodies, like putting our legs out, putting our arms out like reaching for space, feeling how that feels in your body. For some people, this is too much space. Like this is going to bring up emotions. This is going to be like, you want to come back and contract. Like when I first was doing this practice, like I wasn't able to just take up space. And it's like, then you ask yourself, how long can I hold this? Like, how long can I hold this space? And then sometimes you have to like give yourself a hug because you're like, oh my God, that's heavy. Taking up space is heavy. So you have to give yourself a hug. And so then you love on yourself. And then you take up space again and you just keep coming back to taking up as much space and taking up as much space and just keep expanding and like drop it into your body and asking yourself, how does this feel in my body? Is it heavy? Can I do it? Can I allow it? Do I give myself permission to take up this much space? And then again, give yourself love, like come back to like holding yourself and like soothing yourself because a lot of times when you're taking up space, you have to like give yourself some love too. You can't just always going to taking up space, but you have to physically put your body into that taking up space because we're not used to that. We're not used to making ourselves bigger. I always say, pick your power pose, like pick your power pose. Like what is that pose that makes you feel bigger? That makes you like put your chin up and shoulders back. That is taking up space. You have to give yourself love as you're taking up space. Being young is harder now than it's ever been before. Like when I was young, there was no social media. There was no cell phones. Like it wasn't all I had to compare myself to were the people in my environment. And now the young people have to compare yourselves to not just the environment and magazines and movies. Now it's like everyone, everywhere. It's so, it's all consuming. It is all consuming. But again, we can make a new decision. We can write a new story for ourselves. 
how these young people can start to do that is putting things that uplift them on their feed. Like get rid of what doesn't serve you. What's triggering you right now? Who says it has to be there? Like get rid of it. If it doesn't spark, like right now, my social is just like everything that inspires me. Like I have people that I look up to. I have people that motivate me. I, all that is on my feed. Like if you were to scroll my feed, you would be like, wow, wow, wow. Cause these women, these humans are just beautiful souls. And that's what I want to soak up. That's what I want to see. So I've started deleting anything that doesn't bring me joy. If it's on my feed and it's not like a, yeah, then it's going. And I giving myself that permission to do that because it's my space. And you have to create the environment that you can thrive. You have to create the environment that you can grow. Again, we're coming back to blooming like a flower, like a flower needs conditions to grow. We need conditions. We need an environment to grow. So we have to start by creating that environment to grow. And it starts with what do we see when we scroll to social media? What are we watching on TV? Like my husband loves horror movies and loves blood and guts and guns. And I do not, like, I do not want to see that. I want me a good love story with a happy ending. <laughs> like I want to feel good or I want something that makes me cry because it's like so touchy. Like, how do I want to feel is like the question, <laughs> the question that I always, always come back to is if, does it make me feel good? If it doesn't make you feel good, then get rid of it. Who says you have to keep it? Get rid of it. Start there. Start making your feed, your social, your environment, like conducive, like get yourself a candle, like light yourself a candle every day and look at that candle, make it smell good. Just start creating that environment that you can thrive in. And that's how it starts. Thank you so much for listening to the Make Life Fun podcast. I am so filled with joy to have you here. If this show resonates with you, I have a gift for you. If you're feeling stuck, this freebie may be just what you need. I believe that if you know your why, it helps you get unstuck quicker. So to connect with your heart and know your why and figure out what it is that is most important to you, get the freebie. It's in the show notes. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast to get notifications each week. To support the show, you're invited to leave a tip in the tip jar. Information for all this is in the show notes. Sending love and light to the spirit listening to this today. Be blessed. <laughs>